Alright guys, welcome back to another building tutorial for MCrater. Today we got the structure all set up, so it's actually spawning the entire thing now. And uh, we need a plugin for that, we need Chunk Manager, so I will leave that link uh, for the plugin in the description. But as you can see, um, not only are skeletons starting to spawn in here, but um, you got all the different uh, things. And there should be a few pillagers, I think, in this one. Or something I don't know I'll just keep going up until we find something but I did notice that the pillagers and stuff uh, start to spawn and uh, it does seem like it does generate um, other than that I haven't found really a way to go about generating it without chunk manager now I know chunk manager isn't the greatest thing to actually use for loading the chunks and stuff like that but it's the only way to do it for some reason until the whole structure system gets revamped but uh that might never come so yeah so as you can see they basically generate like that and it will it just uses the basic uh system for generation uh sometimes you might get uh something like this now that's normal it's just because the train is a little bit different and this is also a riverbed if you want a condition for basically testing for the area, then you can basically run my conditional script. And it, what that will do is it will basically test if there's enough space for it to generate so it doesn't spawn in like this. And um, even just testing for things under the corners, like here and maybe in the center as well, would probably be work just as well to make sure that it's all flat and connected but um, the generation script that I created uh, for the structure I'll leave the link to that in for the github as well uh, it works obviously I wouldn't I keep it up to date uh, one thing you might have noticed is it just lagged a little bit when I just flew over this area because this uh, structure was spawning in so if you are using large structures like this what you want to do is make sure that it's um, not as frequent between areas because it will lag a lot when generating chunks for the first time and um, yeah as you can see it just basically clears out the area items from the grass and stuff drop and it looks like there was one or two cows that died as well but uh, yeah so that's basically it uh, I will show you the script in just a second and the pillagers do spawn around here uh, due to those invisible blocks that we basically put uh, there might be some more pillagers up here. Now, they do generate over time. Mm. Now, the, like, they'll keep generating, right? So, the higher we go up, uh, there's a whole bunch of spawners. I'm not sure if there's any that are spawning up here. It looks like uh, some of the mushrooms broke, too. That might be a post-generation thing. Maybe the light level was too high or something. But, yeah, that seems like it's doing good. Let's just fly over here quickly and see if there's anything else that uh, basically can generate. I don't think there was any conditions for the type of biome that it could generate in, but I could be wrong. Might have set it to planes. Actually, I'm not seeing anything around here, so it might have been just planes. Let's just kind of fly over this way. I'm sure we'll hit a planes pretty soon. Has to be one somewhere over here. Okay, I, I felt the generation tick. There we go. There's the other one. Okay, so this one basically just loaded in. Uh, there's two of them. And this one happened in the uh, dark oak forest. That's interesting. But it cleared out the entire area. And that's all set up. This kind of dug into the ground a little bit. Again, those uh, that condition that will test for the area and stuff like that that will help with uh, fixing this issue it won't uh, basically mine all the area around it'll just kind of clear out the area within a certain radius you can use the large structure with that one and what it will do is it'll test within a three block area for one block below one block bo above and the current center of where the block is Okay, so there's another one over here. So for some reason, it's happening in Dark Oak Forest, which is kind of interesting. But there's always a plains biome nearby, so it might just be spawning on the edge of the plains biome, like right over here. 
and then spawns that way. Let's see where the access point. Yeah, that's probably what's going on here. Yeah, because the access point would have been here. What's the biome? The biome is dark oak forest, which is interesting. Huh, interesting. Uh, I'm not sure why it would do that, then, but it still did. So, yeah. All right. So let's go into the procedures now. And it's uh, just basically these pr procedures right here, here, and here. So when the tower block is added, what we're doing is we're going to run this on server side, uh, basically just creating a if statement, a not block, and then is provided on remote side, and basically this says client side. And when we're setting it to a not statement, basically this means that it will only run on server side. After which we are basically just making sure that the block when it's added is update and notified. And then we're selecting the current location of the block where it's basically added. And then we're scheduling the tick update to basically update in zero ticks. Uh, this basically helps it refresh and um, allows it to start ticking again. So that's basically run from the tower bottom on structure instance generated. So the generation condition for your basically your block. And then what we're doing is we're basically going to remove the block at uh, one block above. And then we're going to, or one block below, pardon me. And then we're going to place the block one block below. And then we're going to um, spawn the structure uh, with the, or pardon me, we're going to call the procedure. So. Basically what this does is it's going to call the procedure for the one block added. So the one down, down here. And it's just gonna make sure that it runs when the structure is generated through the instance. And then we have the tower spawner update tick. So this is the part that requires chunk manager. So basically what this does is it's going to offset the coordinates by 32 blocks. And this should allow you to make sure that the entire structure area for the chunks are loaded in uh, before the structure is spawned. This will fix the um, issues with the, basically the structure only generating in parts. So after we've done that, we needed to set the X and Z location. Y isn't needed for this particular procedure because um, when chunks are loaded in, like force loaded, it will count from the bottom of the world to the top of the world. So you don't actually need a Y condition for loading in chunks. So we're offsetting it by 32 blocks. That's uh, 32 blocks in one direction. And then we're going to run this five times. So it gives us a five by five, basically chunk area to basically load in. So every time that we basically, um, increase this value what we're doing is we're moving it over 16 blocks because one chunk is 16 blocks right so we want to make sure that it shifts the selection for loading the chunk in 16 blocks so it creates a grid system for loading the structure in. Uh, we're just basically going to set the variable for chunk which we've defined here if you have chunk manager installed you can actually select chunk and then give it a name it doesn't matter what you call it and then we're just going to force load that chunk after which we're going to spawn in our bottom of our tower and then we're going to increase the Y axis to 32 plus on the Y axis and then we're gonna spawn in our top tower. And then what we're doing is we're going to make sure that the variables for X and Z are reset to negative 32. And then we're going to basically unload the chunks. So basically we're just setting this to false and what that does is it's going to force load uh, pardon me, force unload the chunks, so in the same area. And that's all there really is to it. So again, the repeaters, uh, these things right here, you can find under flow control. Um, depending on your structure size, you might need to set this a little bit differently, but the value for this is five. Uh, number blocks can be found under the math operator. And local variables are under custom variables. And then once you have a couple number of variables in, you'll be able to grab these blocks and then set them for your X and Z. And then basically you might notice that this is basically resetting it the same as this. This is because when this repeater is finished repeating, 
you need to reset the value so it basically starts over again so that's basically what this does it just makes it sure that when this is increased by 16 then it, it basically starts over again at the same location if not then it's just going to keep increasing one direction which isn't what you want and the chunk manager blocks are found under here uh, you, you're going to have to define the chunk so again set that up like exactly like this you want to set your x position here your z position and you want to assign that to a local variable called chunk and basically you just place that in there and then it's going to save it and then use uh, force load and then the chunk so go back to force force load and then you want to use the chunk and you want to set this to true or false depending on what version you want to loot uh, basically set the chunk to be loaded or not now if it's not loaded if you don't want it to be loaded then you want to set this to false if you want it loaded then you want to set it to true and um, the position of where the chunks are actually like this script you want to have your structures spawn between these two conditions where they're loading in and you also want to make sure that it's done on server side so it doesn't happen to like take the performance for all the users and stuff like that on the server you just want it on the server side so anything that is done regionally it will only affect the server or the basically the host of the the game but uh, yeah, that's basically what's going on here. And that's the last procedure. The tower spawner, uh, if we go here, uh, you can see uh, when the block is added, we have this procedure here again, linked. And then for the update tick, we're using this one right here. So when this basically starts ticking from the structure, what we're doing is basically just having it to generate the update tick structure. So that's again what the, uh, when block added, it's supposed to schedule the structure and uh, update and notify the same block that it's basically placing. And then we have the tower bottom, and this is where our instant generation condition um, basically goes. So we're just basically loading in when the block is added, and we're making sure that the block at the location is removed, as well as the um, the uh, placing the block down so it's basically updating the actual location and then we're just running the procedure pretty sure it's uh, one block below so it's running it at the block location that we're basically going to be taking from so that's all there really is to it uh, we have this the thing here so I'll make sure to upload the workspace and the procedures and um, yeah uh, the update the procedures and the resources and stuff like that to github so you guys can download it explore it you will need um, chunk manager so I'll just open that up quickly so you'll need this plugin right here I'll make sure to leave the link in the description so you guys can basically use it for loading in your structures Again, it's not recommended to actually use this method, but uh, for larger structures, this seems to be the only way that I can actually get it to properly load without being all glitchy and cutting off half of it because of the structure size. I'm sure if we get jigsaw and stuff like that, those blocks in, we might be able to have a little bit more support on getting different methods to basically generate structures, but currently this is the only way. Uh, it can figure out to actually generate them without getting all cut off and stuff by other chunks loading in and other structures and stuff. So outside of that, that's all I had, the time that I have for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.